Hi, this is Jim Richter. I'm going to give you a short little blues lesson today. I uh, figured I'd show my face and quit being the unknown comic for a while. Unknown mandolinist, I suppose. Um, what I'm going to talk about today are the chord voicings that I tend to favor. Um, these are seventh chords, which blues is very much a seventh chord idiom, so it's important to kind of know your way around as far as the seventh chords, different shapes and the like. And um, there are many seventh chord shapes and extended shapes and the like. And uh, the Jethro Burns Mel Bay book is one of the best for exploring that, um, in my opinion. But I tend to favor two basic shapes. They're related, just a slight bit of difference between them. But uh, they're movable shapes. They can be move, moved up the fretboard uh, vertically or across laterally by jumping a string. Uh, the first shape, say we'll do a G7th here. The first shape, I've got my middle finger on the 4th fret of the G string, my index finger on the 3rd fret of the D string, and my ring finger on the 5th fret of the 2nd string. I'm sorry, I, yeah, actually I would use my pinky. My pinky on the 5th fret of the 2nd string. Now that is a G7 chord. What's unique about it is, is that it's got the 3rd, which is this B note. It's got the 7th. This is F, which is the F. It's got the uh, fifth of the of the chord, which is this D, but it's got no root to it at all. There's no G in there. It's a movable shape, and I tend to remember where my you know my chord is by remembering the third of a note or third of that chord. So if this is the B, which is the third of G, you know, then I know it. I, I just look at where my my middle finger is. If I want to play B flat, B flat, uh, the third of B flat is D, so I've got my middle finger on this D note, which is seventh fret of the G string, I just keep the shape the same. Or I can remember that my fifth is right here, which would be this, this, this um, F note, the eighth fret of the second string. Now for me it requires a little bit of, you know, I, I can use a little bit of theory I know to kind of, and my fretboard knowledge to get around. Uh, for those of you who maybe don't have that, it's just a matter of remembering where uh, the chord shape is. Um, so that's the first one. Now if I move this over a string, I've got a D7 chord. I've got the third, which is the fourth fret of the D string. I've got the um, C, which is the third fret of the second string. And I've got the A, which is the fifth, which is the fifth fret of the first string. So it's the same chord shape, just moved over. Now what I do to make it fuller is I add my my ring finger to the fifth fret of the G string, which gives me a four note chord shape. Um, and again, there's no root in it at all. I've got two sevenths that are an octave apart. I've got the third and I've got the fifth. Because for me, when I play blues and I comp, I really want some bass response. I really want to like dig into the bass. I don't want it to be so shrill on the high end. I want it to give a little bit of oomph with the treble on top for articulation. Now the cool thing about these patterns is, is that in a blues song that typically only has three chords, it's simple to, to stay within a certain area. So you really don't have to think about the, the, the chords that you're playing. So like here's my G. This is my C. That second shape I showed you. There's my D. Let me do a demonstration of how I would use the chords. Um, you know, blues is a pretty much a three chord structure. Blues 12 bar is pretty much three chords. There are all kinds of um, uh, substitutions that you can do in the like that kind of raises it to the level of jazz, but in essence it's three chords. Um, these chords tend to fall right into a general area that remains consistent wherever you go on the fretboard. So it's very easy that once you learn the relation, the spatial relation between, the di spatial distance I guess, between a couple chords, it's very easy to transpose into another key and have your fingers kind of fall in the same area. So as an example, let's do something in G. Now in G, one of the common uh, bass riffs that you would hear, say like in Chicago blues, is what a lot of us call the lumpy rhythm, which is... So that, that would be what the bass is playing, and then it would it would you know move to the appropriate um, riff for that for the you know the chord shape it's moving to. Um, me, 
I would tend to either double that bass riff if somebody else was doing comping and I wanted to kind of stay out of the way, maybe fortify the bottom end, um, or, you know, I would be the, the person comping. And the reason I like these chord shapes, especially the, the full one, is, is that I can really kind of dig into the low end and then have that higher end articulation. And what's good about it is, is that if this is your one, you know, in a, in a general three chord song, you've got the one, four, five. The one chord in this case would be G, the four chord would be C, the five chord would be D. So this is my G7. This would be my C7. Now the C7 is the B flat, third fret of the G string, playing it with my ring. The middle finger is playing the second fret of the D string, third string, which is a E note. My index is playing the first fret of the A string, which is B flat. And my ring fin or pinky finger is playing third fret first string, which a G note. Now you can see where here this finger was on the fourth fret. This finger then becomes on the third. So that's kind of the relation between the first chord, the, the one chord, and the four chord. And that relationship remains true anywhere. If I'm playing B flat, and I need to play E flat, which is the four chord for B flat, it just jumps down a fret. And then for my five chord in G, so I've got the one, the four, and then I just move up two. So for the, the one and the five, it's just a matter of jumping over a string, jumping laterally down a string, and then adding the fifth fret here. So uh, for that rhythm, this would be what I would play. There are interesting things that you can do with the seven shapes. You hear it a lot, like an organ vamping or guitar vamping. Um, like this is my G7. You can slide up from a half step below, from one fret below, go from F sharp seven up to G7. Uh, you can go down a half step. So say in this case, going from G sharp seven, A flat seven, whichever, down to G. And you heard me doing some of that. Gives it a little bit of movement, makes it interesting, uh, gives it some rhythmic in, uh, rhythmic emphasis. Um, one thing that you caught me doing, and it's hard for me to do um, effectively sometimes on mandolin, is uh, kind of like the Stormy Monday, T-Bone Walker, um, Stevie Ray Vaughan type riff, where you're playing a chord. Because this relation here, this G and the 7, you can slide up into like a G6, or not G6, I'm sorry. Yeah, G6. Thank you very much, and um, I don't have any tablature for this, but you can find tablature and other assorted items at jimrichter.com. Thank you.